Okay, we're back again with the morning show with Prince Carlton. We got a very special guest, one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> very, <laughs> very special guest. <laughs> the, 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 one of the first things for, for the longest time. Say it, take it away. Uh, one of the first things we like to do is we like to have our guests introduce themselves uh, in their own words and just, just tell our audience about some of uh, like the work you do. Wow. Well, what's up, everybody? I am Angela Stanton King. Many of you may know me from years ago when I had a reality show on BET entitled From the Bottom Up, produced by Queen Latifah. If you don't remember me from there, you may remember that scathing tell-all book I wrote, Life of a Real Housewife, which made number three on Amazon, made number one on Amazon three times. If you don't remember me from there, you may remember me from working in the Oval Office, with President Trump and his administration. And if that don't work, you may remember the triple homicide on The Breakfast Club. And then if you don't remember <laughs> that, you know, the triple homicide on Hollywood a lot. And then there was the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate knockout on Dr. Phil. So it's me and King, your girl standing 10 toes down, <laughs> issues that really matter. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being on the show. Okay. We, we, since, since this happened today, it is major breaking news. Everybody talking about it. And, and you're a big supporter of Donald Trump. What do you think about the indictment that was just handed down uh, to Donald Trump? You know, um, the reality of it is that this isn't prosecution, it's persecution. And we all know that Donald Trump is a threat to the establishment because he cannot be bought. This is one of the most hated men in our country because he does not go along with their agendas. If we just sit back and use common sense and we think about all of these things that they have accused this man of from colluding with Russia to the indictments that led to um I mean, the impeachments that led to the uh, the acquittals. If we talk about the FBI raid, we talk about January 6th. Out of everything they have tried to arrest him for, all of a sudden, now they are arresting him for something that really is no case, no charge. Mind you, the news hasn't even said what the charge is. That's because there is no charge right now. They're arresting him over hush money paid to a prostitute that wasn't even paid from Donald Trump. Michael Cohen, and, and I don't have anything against convicted felons because I'm a convicted felon. This guy was found guilty of lying. Not only that, he took a loan out on his house and he paid Stormy Daniels the money. There is no transaction of money from Donald Trump to Stormy Daniels. And then here's the thing, guys, let's just really think about this. This is Donald Trump. This is not somebody that was poor hustling. This man has money. He does not have to pay Stormy Daniels any funds from a campaign in order to keep her quiet. Not to mention Stormy Daniels, by her own admission, also said that nothing ever happened. She was right. sued by Trump and his attorneys, forced to pay back all the attorney fees. And now this, this is just something to keep him or try to keep him from being successful in the 2024 presidential campaign. Wow. Wow. So, Absolutely. So you, and oh, that's so, my president, and I'm going to stick beside him. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So speaking of Trump and, and politics, can you tell us uh, how you got your start in politics and, and what it, what motivated you to be in politics and be a, like a political figure? You know, that's a really good question because I never really paid attention to politics. Um, once I got through with the reality show from the bottom up, and of course, I was in a $30 million lawsuit, ended up winning that lawsuit. The next thing I know, in 2016, Trump ran for office. And my godmother, Alveda King, who was the niece of Martin Luther King Jr., happened to be really good friends with the Trump family. So when he ran for office, one of his initiatives was criminal justice reform. And anybody that's familiar with me or my story knows that I am criminal justice reform. And so mm -hmm. I had a story. And this was around the time when President Trump was working on the First Step Act. He was like, if anybody knows of anybody that's been left behind, you want to share your story, come in. And Meek Mill and Jay-Z and everybody was like, nah, we ain't going. Trump <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I was yep. like, send me, I'll go. Because yep. hell, <laughs> you don't have to like me to free people from prison. And I don't have to like you. Like We have to understand that we got to get mm -hmm. out of our emotions if we really want to get yep. work done. So I went in and I met this man. 
And I realized that this man was not what the media was painting him to be. Mm. What really opened my eyes to politics was that this was during a time when everyone from our community and everyone in the media was crying about family separation at the border. And I was like, wait a minute, how are y'all crying about families separated at the border when all of our families been separated in the border? Right. <laughs> To Section 8, when the man couldn't be in the house, all the way going back to the slaving box where they separated the children and sold them away from the parents, all the way going back to when we get incarcerated. If you go to jail, even if it's for driving on a suspended license and your kid is in the car with you, you're going to be separated from your family. The kid yep. just go to jail with you. This is American law. So my eyes begin to open up in that instance because I'm like, wow, they... They're really fighting to change the law for people at the border, but not change the law for those in the border. And mm. when they started talking about, you know, the kids in cages, I at that time was working with juvenile detention centers across the nation. And I'm like, well, what about our kids in cages? You know, yeah. it's all the same thing. And so another thing that opened up my eyes to politics was through my relationship with President Trump and his administration, I was able to sit firsthand to a lot of his speeches. And so I would be there at the speech and hear everything he said. And then the minute it was over, I see how they would take one little piece and they would change it and they would crop it and try to make it appear as if it was something else. And I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Yep. The media, mm -hmm. politicians, the Democrats, they got our community in a chokehold. Let me speak up because guess what? My people can identify with somebody like me. They can try to hate all they want. But one thing they know, they're like, wait a minute, the IT Angie, that's the real deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, exactly. it, 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 it was so crazy because the first time the first time I I uh, uh came across you was the uh the, the Breakfast Club, the Breakfast Club interview. And it's so crazy because I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, she right on everything. Like, what is yeah, the yeah, so, you know, We I'm showed like, it to yo, our parents. Like, we sat down with our parents and watched it all together you know, again. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so so so, uh, okay. All of, when people say, did you get a lot of back, like, like a lot of slack for liking Donald Trump? Because Man, I got all the hate in the world. I was called a coon. I was called a sellout. I yep. was told they was revoking my black card. I'm like, how you gonna revoke my black card? I mean, I you know, not that I gotta cop no deuces or nothing like that. But I'm, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> stereotype that there is that you can compare to being black i've experienced it it's been a part of my life and right. and at that time it was really hurtful to me because we were so blind and we mm -hmm. couldn't see i always tell people that 2020 election that was the year of 2020 vision when we start waking up to what was really going on in politics and it's right. like all my life i had been a democrat just because mama and grandmama and everybody was a democrat and i'm like they say the party switched I think the parties are now beginning to switch back because we realize that the Democrats yes. that we once supported are no longer the Democrat policies of today. Right. People in our community, you know, we respect everybody, give them the right to live their own lives. Everybody knows even when it comes to my own children. But we don't support agendas that, you know, sexualize our children, that mutilate <clears throat> genitals of our children, that mm -hmm. confuse our children. Like, Whatever you grow up to be is what you grow up to be. But in our community, we believe in protecting our kids. Absolutely. Right? So we got to <laughs> Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what I had my, over the, during the, uh, the 2020 election. My best friend, uh, he, he was trying to diss the platinum plan. And I, was, I asked him, I said, what do what plan do Joe Biden got for black people? And he couldn't name it. I said, so you're going to diss a man with a plan for black people, but you're going to vote for a man that you don't even know what his plan is for black people. And, and his plan happened to be nothing because he ain't done nothing, <laughs> met with nobody I or nothing. So, I was so ashamed. I'm sitting up here in Atlanta, Georgia, with Trump for the rollout of the platinum plan. Then Joe Biden go on TV and say, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. black. Telling black people, I got the bag. <laughs> don't fuck on the bag. This is right. $100 billion. You got to prove to Joe Biden you ain't black. We need some money. You don't be black. I just, I was so $500 billion specifically for the black community. And we have sat back and watched for the last three years every other community and every other agenda be pushed forward before us.
while they have used us and played on our emotions to get in office. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so for, we appreciate you creating Auntie Angie's. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 and even with that, um, like, like even, even me seeing, because I have a two-year-old, so even me seeing my wife give birth, I understand. I, I don't fully understand because I'm not a woman, but I understand how much women go through, and, and, and we need somebody there for women who are choosing life and saying, "Yo, I'm not going to abort. I know I'm gonna be in a hard circumstance, but I'm not going to uh, abort my kid." Um, tell us what inspired you to create Auntie Angie's. Wow, my own personal story. Um, because back in 2005, I was in prison, pregnant myself, and. A lot of people tried to encourage me to abort and I chose life and I ended up giving birth to my daughter chained to a bed with the sheriff watching. And in that very instance is what brought me before President Trump and ended up getting me that full unconditional pardon and passing in the first step act. And also he made it illegal for them to chain women to the bed. But here's the miraculous thing. Right. I had no idea that 18 years ago, while I was chained to that bed, giving birth to that baby, that my daughter would grow up to be the international Harvard debate champion of the world. I had no idea that my daughter would get a full scholarship ride to every top Ivy League school in the nation. And that just goes to show you how the enemy tried to trick me out of my blessing. And I realized that although I chose life and I got out of prison, you know, the, the choice between life and death was simple. For some women, you just need a little bit of help. I was down on my luck. I was a convicted felon. I couldn't get any Section 8. I couldn't get any housing assistance. I lost my mother and father to, I'm not my father, my mother and grandmother to incarceration. I mean, to death while I was incarcerated. So I literally came home with a $25 check and a bus ticket. Four babies waiting on me and they're telling me here, go start your life over. And I was in a very, very dark place. And if it had not been for the mentorship, the guidance and the support of my godmother, Alveda King, who I just happened to meet while looking and searching for help, then I probably wouldn't be here right now. And I definitely wouldn't be as successful as I am. And one of the things that she said to me, or asked her, I said, what do you want in return for helping me and my children? She said, the only thing she told me this 18 years ago, she said, the only thing I want from you is for you one day to be to someone who I am to you. And so Mm. we have Auntie Angie's house. Um, Another thing that got me started on this Auntie Angie's house, because people know that I have been very outspoken about the pro-life movement, but it's like we can talk. But when are we going to have a solution? So when Mm. I start hearing all of this talk about a black maternal health crisis, I say, wait a minute, you know. Somebody has to do something. If we as black women are three times likely to die compared to white women giving birth to our children, regardless of income or education, then that's a problem because black women have been given birth since the beginning of time. Let me tell you how (laughs) dangerous this is. If the black woman is dying, giving birth to the baby, and then the baby is dying during the abortion process, then what does that mean for black life? So we've sat back and watched these people scream Black Lives Matter. Well, if Black Lives Matter, how do we not know that Black life begins in the womb? Exactly. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) How how, how do you, what do you think played a major role in in, in Black people supporting abortions and and, and killing our own babies? Like, like what what went into that? And we we supported, like, we in Minneapolis, and I remember they had a, 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 a day where everybody went outside in front of like the first ad venue and they had a concert and all of the money went to Planned Parenthood and black people out there supporting it, white people out there. Did you imagine, like, what, what is going on? Could you imagine if they supported Auntie Angie's house the way that they supported Planned Parenthood? Exactly. This is this is the problem. The problem is that we have been lied to because, see, when Roe v. Wade was passed, they didn't have the technology that they have today. So they told us it's not a baby. It's just a blood clot. It's not alive. And many of us still believe that to this day. And because Roe v. Wade was legal back, I know, before I was born, probably before you guys were born, too, 
It just mm -hmm. became a way of life and they fed us this lie. If you want to be successful, if you want your other children to be successful, don't have a whole bunch of kids. The last thing you need is to be a single mother. Like they have cast this dark cloud yep. about being a single mother. And I'm like, oh my God, you are going to persecute the women who chose to keep their babies and raise their babies because the majority of us came from single mother homes. But you're going to persecute the women that chose to keep their babies and raise their babies and reward the women that aborted their baby. But if a man abandons his child, you you go to jail. Or you yeah, got locked up. <laughs> Mama don't want to, she can just go kill it and be done with it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I was having a conversation and it's uh uh it's kind of, it's kind of like uh on this um social media site or whatever, and we was on a group and um we were talking about just black people, black future and generational wealth and everything. And the, uh, the topic of abortion came up and uh, the lady who was running the room, she was giving me way more uh, 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 pros to abortion than cons. And I'm like, if we in here talking about uh, 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 all these reasons to abort a baby, then we have no future. We shouldn't be talking about yeah. black wealth, black housing. We shouldn't be talking about nothing because right. if we can't, if we can't at least just have our own kids and raise them, then nothing else matters. You know what I'm saying? Black genocide. Abortion has been the, the number one killer of, of black Americans since Roe v. Wade was passed. And it's unfortunate that a lot of the women who claim to advocate for our community They've taken on the language of the KKK. If you ask me, if you are yeah. advocating for our children to be lynched in the womb, there is no difference between you and a KKK member. And people are going to get upset about this. But listen to what I'm saying. They just took the blood off of their hands, right? Because they're no longer coming to our doors, knocking on the door, kidnapping us, hanging us from cheese, setting us on fire, castrating our men. They don't have to do that anymore. They have given women a choice. And now black women, for whatever reason, feel liberated having a choice to execute their own children, our very own offspring. The dream can't live if we abort it, okay? And we will never become the majority if we are constantly aborting our votes. If there are strength in numbers, why are we running to the abortion meals and why are we making every excuse for our children to die? I mean, it's just so sickening. People will say to me, oh, you would rather have that baby born in the ghetto and grow up around drugs. Well, you advocating to kill them? A lot of us grew up like that and we were just fine. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you know what? You know, you know I, I, tell, I, tell, I tell you all the time, I'm like, even even our ancestors as slaves, they chose to give life. That's the worst predicament. Your predicament ain't worse than slavery. Ain't so worse. if they chose life, then we can choose life. You know what I'm saying? But not only that, can you imagine, let's just fast forward 100 years. And the Black people of that day are talking about their ancestors. So we as their ancestors, you mean to tell me our civil rights was fighting for them to be aborted? Right. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> they for us to be aborted. They fought, for they fought for us to live. We have allowed these white liberals and these sold out oh politicians to make us believe that there is liberation in aborting our future. Man, I, we talk we talk about these white liberals so <laughs> much on this show. It's so crazy. They got a they got a stronghold on the black community. It, it's so for some. For some reason, now if you pro life, you you are you are uh, 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 you are uh, anti woman. Uh, you are you, you, you are against, yeah. woman, you against a woman's choice. What about your yeah. choice to close your legs? What about your choice to get on birth control so you don't get pregnant? What about your choice to swallow? What about your choice to jack? How, how about that? I mean, you have several choices. We should be focusing and putting funding on pregnancy prevention because if we don't create the life, then we don't have to end the life. This argument about whether or not it's alive, baby, if it wasn't alive, you wouldn't need an abortion to kill it. Because once that's, that's it. created, there is only one way to end it. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yep. absolutely. So, so in, in a social media exchange with uh, Talib Kweli, you, uh, you said you can't be pro-abortion and pro-black. Uh, 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 I know you touched on that already, but why is that your stance? Because if you're pro-abortion, 
and you claim to be pro-black and you understand the numbers behind abortion, you understand the Title X funds, you understand the Negro Project, you understand who Margaret Sanger was, a eugenist, mm -hmm. and you understand her vision, then you know that you can't be pro-black if you are advocating to lynch black life in the womb. There is nothing more racist than killing a black person before he's born. Nothing. <laughs> well, you That's at it? least let my feet touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know that Obama so much. How many people y'all on the border? How many of our people have we sacrificed at these abortion mills? And another thing I have to ask our people: When did we start standing with the satanic temple? Right. Oh my God. We have always been religious people. You see the satanic temples, they taking a stance on abortion, suing the government for their right to perform abortion rituals. Mm hmm. You know, it's the black church. Yep. Oh my God. I ain't standing with Satan now. I ain't doing that. <laughs> it, it, no, exactly. me neither. <laughs> uh, I'm scared. I don't want to do that. I'm fine <laughs> with them, but I can't join them. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. I was telling my mom the same thing. See, my mom and dad, they, they hate when we bring this up. My mom and dad, well, well I'll say this, my mom is is a is a Democrat. She don't even want to hear nothing. I, I, I say, I say, mom, you know they got, you know, they 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 voting like that you can go and bring like kids to California and get uh, 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 procedures done it's without their parents notice. She don't want to hear nothing. Hey, look, she don't want to hear none of that. But they just stuck in their ways. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> my dad and my dad, he got locked up. He got locked up by Joe Biden, by that bill, and, and he still uh, goes to Joe look, Biden. Look. I see his dad. <laughs> hey, 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 he, he, he gonna love this when he hear it because we tell him this all the time. We tell, him, we tell him, dad, you got locked up in '94 with, with, with the same year as the '94 crime bill. But then you voted for Donald Trump. I mean, you voted for Joe Biden. The, uh, one, the author of the 94 crime. Uh -huh. yep. Our people have to wake up. We are so driven by the media. If the Breakfast Club say vote for Joe Biden, we go vote for Joe Biden. If Diddy yep. say vote for Joe Biden, they go vote for Joe Biden. If Cardi P B rap and make a song about her WAP and then go tell you to vote for Joe Biden, you... We are not even listening to intellectual people on a political level when it comes to advice. We are listening to entertainers. And the thing about listening to those entertainers is that all of those entertainers are well off. They got their millions of dollars. They live in high on the hill and still telling you all press. Now show me how to get money, how you got money. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you suffering and I'm sitting up here watching you. Now, Beyonce won a thousand dollars for a concert ticket just to stand up oh during tax God. season. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got oh, a lot. Man. We got, we got oh. a long ways to go, um, and we got to stop. One of the most important things I can tell you guys, because I know our time is winding up, is that when it comes to politics, we need people that represent us all the way across the aisle. They have to be. To think that we're all supposed to be Democrats is insane. We need somebody advocating for us on the Republican side, on the Democrat side, on the independent side. If we are playing football and we're on defense, we can't all be standing in the same spot. We got to be mm -hmm. spread out against uh, all the way across the field in order to accomplish our goal. And that's how we have to look at this issue of politics. If your sister is a Republican, but you know she for you, stand with her. We need yep. people on the side. The Democrats right now, I don't know what's up with the Democrats, right? We, we got a lot of folks that's Democrat. I don't understand how they're being silent on these issues that yep. are mutilating the genitals of our children. The Born Alive Act, ain't no way in the world every Democrat in office voted against a baby being born alive is surviving an abortion attempt. Do you know how far along a woman has to be in order for the baby to survive the abortion attempt? All of these people protesting saying that they're for everybody's rights. Well, you've been given the right to life. Why are you trying Absolutely. to take somebody else's? Yep. 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 Um, uh, um, we got just a couple more questions. Um, what do you believe is going on in our school systems where they're having a uh, 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 drag Pedophilia. queens? Pedophilia. Absolutely. I, let yeah. me tell you something. I have, listen, I, I've been to drag shows. I have nothing against 
LGBTQ adults. But when you get yourself in a position, because I was there and anybody can go look up and Google Angela Stanton at Palace Bar. I'm down there in Miami on the beach, yep. 12 o'clock at night. They asked me <laughs> to show my ID to get in the club. I show my ID to get in. Adults everywhere, smoking, drinking. The drags come out on stage. They perform a sexually explicit show. Five minutes later, the drags come back on stage. They got children, got the children poses for money, bending over all of this. I go off, right? Oh my God. Here's what this is. And I'm when I say children, I'm talking about like seven and eight years old. So uh, if I had to show my ID to get in the club, what did the children have to show to get on the stage? Absolutely. Something ain't right. So you can't <laughs> take your son, you can't take your 18-year-old son to Magic City. Right, e exactly. <laughs> and he's 18. <clears throat> you can take your four-year-old son to go see a man dressed as a woman, woman wiggling his balls <laughs> and his banana. <laughs> it's like, what, what oh, people don't man. understand is all it is is a dude. People Listen, don't understand. Yeah. And these people want to tell us they fighting for women's rights. How you fighting for women's rights? Even on the issue of abortion, you telling me you fighting for women's rights. Well, how you you all you killing the women of tomorrow? Don't you got to be born to become a woman? Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> it is abortion is forever. Don't you got to be born to be trans? You got to be born to be anything. So their whole argument, everything that they stand on right now, if you all cannot see that this is so much bigger than any of us. And regardless of where you are, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Jew, we have to be able to see that this is really beginning to be a battle between good and evil. It does not matter if you are Republican or Democrat. It don't matter if you're Black or white. It don't matter if you're Christian, Jew, or Muslim. You know it's wrong for them to be taking these children in the hospital and cutting off their gender. You know mm -hmm. that. Yep. Exactly. And, and, and don't, nobody, don't support the, the candidates that's, that's pushing. You know that. You know, mm -hmm. these people need to offer us something more than abortion. Abortion is not a form of reparations. We right. said making these white liberals our friend because they want to give us a free ride to get a free abortion to kill our black baby. Why don't you pay for our babies to live? You want to pay for them to die? Why don't you pay for them to live? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know. Yeah, and we and the thing about it, it, we don't we still don't see it. We still behind we still. Voting these same people in every day. Blind as a bat, just because they black. But just because you black, didn't the black person kill your family member? Yeah. Didn't the black person kill your homeboy? Didn't the black person break your heart, set you up? I mean, we love our people, don't get us wrong. But don't think that just because you black that you ain't whack. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we got we got one, we got one more question. Okay, so uh uh April 22nd, you have the black agenda conference. Uh, bringing the power back to the communities. You got Judge Joe Brown, uh, uh, Kwame Kilpatrick. Uh, um, so what do you hope to accomplish uh, at this event? And Michi X. Don't forget about Michi X. Well, Michi what X, we're yep. trying to do is we want this to be about solutions because you guys know, you guys are on YouTube. You guys got your own show. You know, we always talking about the issues that are impacting our communities. But when are we going to come together and come up with some solutions? So this is a solution-based conference. And one of the things that I've learned since I've had my dad in politics, and I have to always be honest with my people, y'all, when they come to us, we ain't the top at the top of the list on the Republican or the Democrat side. The reason mm. why I truly stand with the Republican Party is because if you're voting to protect children, you're voting to protect all children. And our children mm. fall up under that category as Absolutely. all children. They're not in there just advocating for white children. They're saying, hey, stop these agendas against children. But when it comes to black issues in particular, it's not at the top of the Republican list and it's not at the top of the Democrat list either. They only use us to vote every four years off of our emotions. And then the minute that they get in office, we'll see the anti-Asian hate crime bill passed. Yep. $49.5 million gone to the Asian American community. What a slap in the face. You can go in any black community across America right now and find the Asian owned business. We have supported the Asians. 
whether it was through the lunch box that sold hot wings on the corner, whether it was the nail salon, whether it was the beauty salon, we have supported Asians and made them rich while they have sucked out the black dollar and put it back in their own communities. But how many Asian communities can you go in and see a black owned business? We were finessed. Exactly. Again, once again, stop Asian hate. If we have a job, we don't have a job when you're taking our money. Right. 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 To pass an anti Asian hate crime bill, state and do. And I don't think anybody deserves hate. But they passed the anti Asian hate crime bill. 72 hours after eight Asians were murdered here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's been almost a year since 10 elders were murdered in Buffalo, New York. And you know what they told mm -hmm. us? Because this white boy had a gun and went in there and killed y'all folk, we finna take y'all guns. Well, shit, yeah. if I had a gun and the white boy came back, he would have been dead. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I guess we're going to wake up eventually. We, we <laughs> listen. We appreciate you so much. Is there anything that you want to let our audience know about? Yes. Anything on uh, so, social media? Any yes. other events? And, 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 oh, and, and, I got. I got a personal question. Are you coming back to Twitter? I have been permanently kicked off Twitter. They say that I threatened somebody. Did now? I'll give you guys my version of what happened. Okay. Right. It was after the Doctor Phil situation. They ambushed me with a transgender. The transgender went on Twitter tweeting that he was going to be a mother to my children. I didn't know this transgender. So I right. tweeted him back. I said, listen, if I catch you anywhere around my children, I'm going to cut your penis off for you. Now, they right. said I threatened them. It wasn't a threat. It was a promise. If you go by somebody's house right now, <laughs> exactly. beware of the dog. They telling you if you come in that yard, that dog is going to tear your behind up. I'm telling you as a mama, if you come anywhere near my children, this is what's like. It wasn't a threat. They said it was a threat and permanently suspended me, so I will not be back to Twitter. Every time I created an account, if you got anything to do with Angela, whatever they suspended, they done suspended like eight more accounts. So I'm not going to be back on Twitter. Oh, but my I, gosh. I can do. I tell you what you guys can do. I need the community to get behind Auntie Angie's house and make sure that you support us. This has to be a community supported effort, grassroots effort. The money is not going to come for Congress. The money is not going to come for funding. OK, we know that Auntie Angie's house was created specifically as a solution to the black maternal health crisis. So even when you get to a lot of these pro-life groups, they support, you know, the other side. But when it comes to us, it's going to take for us to save these lives. We have a right. monthly subscriptions available. You guys would do us a huge favor if everybody watching right now just went and signed up for a $5 monthly subscription. No skin off and nobody back, right? A homeless person can come mm. up with $5 a month. Right. An opportunity for us to change lives and save lives at the same time. AuntieAngie'sHouse.com. You guys also need to head over to the BlackAgendaMovement.com to come to this solution-based conference that we are having in Atlanta, Georgia. And not only that, you guys need to follow me on Instagram, the Angie Stanton, <laughs> and on True Social, I'm Angela Stanton King. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. Thank you. We appreciate you uh, so much. Thank you. Finally. Thank you. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Let's see so if we much. can get you guys to come to Georgia and cover the Black Agenda Movement. I'll send an email. Yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank right, you. Absolutely. Much. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. All right. All right. Bye.